Hello, humans. Welcome back to the Off the Lines podcast, the show where we talk about creativity, introversion, and how to stay wildly functional in a distracted world. I'm your host slash friendly neighborhood bowl of quinoa, Andrew Foltz, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about how I stopped eating like a caveman and managed to save more than an hour every day by batch preparing modular meals. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and I'll see you on the other side. September 2009. All my life, I wanted to be a beefcake, but alas, I was a twig. When I started my first year at Ithaca College, I weighed in at a lean 147, and when my classmates were trying desperately to avoid the freshman 15, I was struggling to not lose body fat. I had, and still have, a freakishly efficient metabolism. You can go ahead and hate me, but the truth is, I admired average build people. When I encountered the bounties of my prepaid meal plan, I decided to give my metabolism a run for its money. I wanted to reach 170 pounds. I have a long list of grievances about Ithaca College, like, I don't know, the thousands of dollars of student loan I racked up and the disturbing lack of real-world skills that would help me repay said loans. But I will give them this. The food was amazing. They had crab, lobster, and other fancy stuff on a regular basis, and of course, all the junk food my slender heart could desire. I ate like a king. The problem with eating like a king, though, is that you don't feel like a king afterward. I made it to 170, but I spent most of my freshman year sick to my stomach. Worse, when I graduated from Syracuse five years later and got a job in New Jersey, I had to confront the harsh reality of fixing all my own meals. Keeping up with my metabolism was expensive and time-consuming. I would fix a new recipe and feel proud, but then four hours later, it would be dinner time and I'd have to do it all over again. Eventually, I just gave up and started fixing spaghetti for every meal. It was a step up from the bowls of ramen and ketchup I would wolf down in college, but let's be honest, the human body is not designed to live on ground beef and noodles 14 times a week. When I started my 365 day comic challenge last year, I knew I had to find a solution. I wanted to eat well, but I couldn't afford organic. And I needed nutritional variety, but didn't want to siphon time from my creative work. I asked myself, okay, self, how can I eat fast, cheap, and healthy? One day, I was fixing a bowl of rice and accidentally tripled the recipe. At first, I was pissed, but then it was like, oh, wait, now I don't have to cook for the next three days. Hell yeah! I started buying rotisserie chickens, huge packages of carrots, and bulk rice, which meant I could spend 15 minutes and $10 for seven meals. I spooned the mixture into canning jars, froze it, and didn't have to cook lunch for the rest of the week. Breakfast became simple too, eggs, oatmeal, milk, which left supper open for experimentation. After a few weeks of this, my chicken gumbo started to get a little monotonous. I thought, okay, maybe it's not great to eat the same exact thing every day from the standpoint of nutrition and also, like, sanity. I didn't want to start from scratch, so I made my meals modular. The rice and carrots stayed the same, but I would put different meats in each canning jar. Then I replaced the meat and rice with quinoa and lentils. Plant-based ingredients are even cheaper than chicken, so I had money left over to start buying Kalamata olives and broccoli and cheese, etc. When I made my weekly mash, I added one unique ingredient to each jar, which was kind of like a daily surprise. I never knew what I was going to get, and adding variety this way hardly took any effort. Since I wasn't spending time thinking about my meals, I was more focused on drawing comics and writing articles. Plus, I had energy left over to get really creative with dinner. It was the perfect trade-off. Your mash doesn't have to be mash at all. It could be soup or quesadillas or sandwiches. The point is to eliminate some variables by making the same type of meal every day and swapping out the ingredients. So here's some steps that can help you do that. Number one, buy in bulk, browse locally. Anything that keeps should be bought in bulk. A 10 pound bag of quinoa, for example, costs around 35 cents per serving, while a small bag from the grocery costs 30 to 50% more, which is three times the average return of the stock market. 
For your smaller ingredients, head to a local farmer's market whenever possible. The food is fresher and you might meet some interesting humans there. Self-checkout machines, on the other hand, are not known for their conversational finesse. Number two, balance your plate. Don't overcomplicate your nutrition. Like Michael Pollan says, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Stick to organic and try to cover the main food groups with each meal. Fruits, oranges, bananas, grapes, veggies, leafy greens, peas, carrots, starches, sweet potato, wholemeal bread, brown rice, proteins, lentil, tofu, chickpeas, fats, walnuts, almonds, seeds, calcium, soy milk, seaweed, spinach. Number three, snack before stress. Boredom and stress both lead to binge eating junk food. So rather than trying to resist temptation, which is exhausting and completely ineffective, keep yourself supplied with healthy snacks and make sure they're actually snackable because it's a lot easier to say no to a donut if you can quickly grab a handful of walnuts or almonds. If you want to eat well, don't make yourself work for it. So here's how you can take action with all this. When picking a meal to batch prepare, you probably don't want to go with your favorite. I love lobster, but I don't want to ruin it by having it for lunch every day. On the other hand, I don't mind ruining lentils or quinoa. Sorry, lentils and quinoa. Also, if eating the same thing every day sounds boring, just think about the time you'll get back to do amazing things creatively. Batching saves me at least an hour every day, and even when I use that time for dinner, cooking is a choice, not a chore. So what dish can you make on repeat? Do you have something you could eat every day if it was super easy to make? Drop a recipe down in the comments below if you have an idea uh, or the comments on Medium because there are no comments in podcast feeds. As for my dish, uh, I've been making quesadillas for my second lunch every day. Cheese, rice, ground beef or tofu, hot sauce and tomato sauce make a really tasty snack in under 10 minutes. So stay tasty, my friends, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, and P.S. This story is part three of six of the Physical Fuel series, so stay tuned because part four is coming to a podcast feed near you very soon. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a creatively tasty day.